In the Gospel today, our Lord talks in very beautiful language about His love for His people and the protection He wanted to extend to them. And it isn't read in this passage that we read, but in another Gospel, he, in the same place, He says that He wanted to take care of them the way a mother hen takes care of her baby chicks. And this is a very beautiful image, but it's important for us to remember that this applies to all of us too. It is not just the Jews that our Lord loves in this manner. We are also chosen by Him to have the truth and to have His true religion. And His care for us is just as beautiful and devoted as it was for His chosen people. And I wanted to talk about this today because we tend to be always lacking in our confidence in God. And this is an important reminder for us that this is a very wrong and even incorrect attitude for us to have. We should think of our Lord more in the way that He presents Himself here. This is particularly the case if we are trying hard to keep His commandments. Obviously, people who are careless about their sins or even living in mortal sin have a lot to fear from God. As our Lord said, His, his people would be surrounded by their enemies and, and their city would be flattened to the ground because of their sins. We can expect an equivalent punishment if that is how we live too. But those of us who are trying to love Him as well as we can should have more confidence in Him than we do. Now certainly our Lord told us that His providence and His protection over the human race extends to everybody. He said, your Father in heaven maketh the rain to fall and the sun to shine both on the just and on the unjust. But he manifests a special care for his faithful servants. We can see this not just in the passage we read today in the Gospel, but on almost every page of Scripture we read God's assurances to us about how he will take care of us if we love him and we serve him. Throughout the Bible, we see two constant recurring themes. On the one hand, we see God commanding mankind to obey Him. And on the other hand, God promises great rewards to everyone who is obedient to Him. For anyone who disobeys Him and sins against Him, though, God threatens terrible punishments and torments. And we see numerous cases also of people being punished even in this life for their sins. Although mainly we can expect our punishments and reward or rewards to be of a supernatural nature in the next life. But the most important blessing that God promises to those that serve Him is the fatherly love and care that He will extend over them. God's solicitude for His servants is greater than any human father or mother could have for their children. Just think what, what human being, what human father or mother has ever been able to leave to, to his or her children an inheritance that is comparable to the one that God has promised to us forever in heaven. An eternity of happiness. Just think what human parent also ever suffered for, for his children or her children, even a tiny fraction of what our Lord suffered for us. And God also assures us that we are always present to his mind. It says in the Psalms, The eyes of the Lord are upon the just, and his ears unto their prayers. But the countenance of the Lord is against them that do evil things to cut off the memory of them from the earth. And the more confidence that we have in God's providence, in His love and His care for us, the more joy we will have in the practice of our religion. We read in Ecclesiasticus something similar. It says, The eyes of the Lord are upon them that fear Him. He is their powerful protector, a strong bulwark, a defense from the heat a cover from the sun at noon. He is a preservation to them from stumbling, a help from falling. He raiseth up the soul and enlighteneth the eyes and giveth health, life, and blessing. 
What a wonderful passage that is. What more could we want? And all of that is what God promises to us if we keep his commandments and we love him. But God promises not only to protect us himself, he promises to have the angels protect us too. It also says in the Psalms, he has given his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. In their hands they will bear thee up lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. So the angels protect us and take care of us too, if we are faithful and we serve God. This means not only our guardian angel, but all of the angels of heaven. And this care that the angels have for us lasts not only for our entire life, but even after our death. We read in the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, that when Lazarus died, it was the holy angels that carried his soul into the bosom of Abraham. There's a striking image of this invisible protection of us in the fourth book of Kings, when the king of Syria sent his entire army to capture the prophet Eliseus. And the servants of Eliseus was terrified when he saw this enormous army advancing against just him and, and his master, as he thought. And Eliseus saw that he was afraid, and he prayed to the Lord to open the eyes of his servants to show him that there were as many forces on their side as there were coming against them from the, the Syrians. And God heard the prayer of Eliseus, and all of a sudden his servant looked around him, and he saw the entire mountain that they were standing on covered with chariots of fire. He saw all the angels that were there to protect them. This shows us that even if we don't see God's care and protection of us, it is real just the same. We need to look with the eyes of faith. In God's wisdom, he not only protects his servants and, and people that love him from falling into evil, but he even uses the evil that they do commit for their benefit. Even if a person, a pious person, falls into sin, when he repents, he gets back on track with his soul, he can use that fall as a means of becoming more humble and having greater contempt of himself because of that sin that he committed. He can use that sin as a motivation to, have, to love God more and to have more a gratitude to God for the mercy that God showed him in forgiving him that sin. We see there are numerous saints who became saints exactly in that manner. They loved God very much because God had been merciful to them and had forgiven them numerous sins. This care of the that God extends to the just is so powerful that it extends even to their, their children and grandchildren, and their entire posterity. In the book of Exodus, God said, I am the Lord thy God, mighty and jealous, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands, to them that love me and keep my commandments. We see the example of, for this of the descendants of King David, the, the kings of Israel uh, from, who were descended from him after his death. Many of those kings were very wicked, but God spared many of them the punishments they deserved in this life because King David was their ancestor. And God did, did not give them the punishment they deserved in this life Although certainly in the next life they, they receive the full measure of their sins. We see also that God blessed the children of Agar, the wife of Abraham, because Abraham was a just man. Or in the case of Joseph the patriarch, he was a holy man when he went to work as a servant for a rich man in Egypt. And God blessed that pagan Egyptian and his entire household just because of the presence of Joseph in his house and made his entire business prosper. 
But God uses other images to, to express his love and his care for us. He compares himself to, to a father or a mother. He says, As a father hath compassion on his children, so hath the Lord compassion on them that fear him. For he knoweth our creation, he remembereth that we are dust. That is from the Psalms. God also compares his love to that of a mother for her child. He says in the book of Isaiah, Can a woman forget her infant so as not to have pity on the child of her womb? And if she should forget, yet will I not forget thee. What a beautiful statement this is. And God also compares himself to a shepherd taking care of his flock. The way a shepherd looks for the sheep that go astray, and he heals the sick ones and bandages the one the sheep that get injured, and provides medicine to every animal that needs it. Not only did our Lord use that image in the New Testament and the Gospels, but the Holy Ghost uses that image repeatedly throughout the prophets of the Old Testament also. There's a very beautiful passage in the prophet Ezekiel in which God says, I will feed my sheep in the most fruitful pastures. Their pastures will be in the high mountains of Israel. There they shall rest on the green grass and be fed in the rich pastures on the mountains of Israel. I will feed my sheep and I will make them to lie down, saith the Lord. I will seek that which is lost and that which was driven away I will bring back. I will bind up that which was broken and I will strengthen that which was weak and that which was fat and strong I will preserve and I will feed them with judgment, meaning with great wisdom and care. What all of this means is that our Lord is trying to tell us here, and in the Old Testament, God told this to his people also, that he is all-powerful, infinitely capable of helping us, and he loves us and wants us to ask him for his help. And we neglect to do that most of the time. That is why we need these such frequent warnings of this. We are proud. First of all, a lot of our problems are brought on us by ourselves. They're the result of our own sins. And we, we are attached to our sins that cause most of the problems we have. And then when we do need help, we are too proud to ask for it from God. But he tells us that if we would submit our wills to him, we have nothing to worry about. We can only gain. This teaching is repeated in the Fathers of the Church, too. We read in St. Augustine, he says, We possess all things in Christ. Or rather, Christ is all things to us. If, we would, if you would be healed of your wounds, he is a physician. If you are thirsty, he is a living fountain. If you fear death, he is your life. If you are weary of the burden of sin, he is your justification. If you hate darkness, he is uncreated light. If you want to reach heaven, he is the way. If you hunger, he is your food. So we see how many different ways St. Ambrose and, and the Holy Ghost in Scripture are trying to make us understand what immense confidence we should have in God. And at the same time, what great submission and humility we need to give Him to. All these promises should encourage us who are trying to serve God. They should encourage us in our tribulations and when our souls are in danger or we are attacked by temptation, we should turn to God for help. He's always there to protect us. As, as St. Paul says this in the epistle today, any time you are tempted, he says, God will make grace to go along with that so that you can always overcome. But not overcome by our own strength, but by God's help, which we need to ask for. And this care for us, 
that God has is worth vastly more than even the greatest riches of this world. The world can offer us nothing that even comes close to what I have been describing. God's love for us and his power that he uses on our behalf. There's another passage in the Psalms where it it describes various material possessions that, that the people of this world want so badly. Things like beautiful houses and gardens and healthy children. and Things like this. And it says, they have called those people happy who that have these things. But rather, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Nothing in this world bears any comparison to the love of God and God's care for us. We have to remember also that this relationship between us and God is not optional. We are obliged to love God and are obliged to accept his care and his love for us. So, if we can hear all of this and say, this sounds very nice, but I I like my sins better, I I am good the way I am, then we have to be afraid, because God will punish us for rejecting this love that he offers us. For people like this, the Holy Ghost warns them, In Zacharias the prophet, God says, I will not feed you. That which dieth, let it die. And that which is cut off, let it be cut off. He will leave us in our sins. God says in Deuteronomy about people who love their sins, I will hide my face from them and consider what their last end shall be. God will think about the punishment that he will give to the people that reject his commandments and reject his love. God threatens also to take away from sinners the help that they need to repent of their sins because they themselves have refused it. So they will ultimately be lost and sent to hell. What a terrible misfortune it is not to enjoy the providence and protection of God And on top of that, to be cursed by God even in this world because we don't want to serve him and don't want to keep his commandments. If even God himself will not protect us in this world, we are hopeless. Even worse than that, God not only abandons us to our own devices, but he seeks to punish us for our sins. He says in the prophet Amos, I will set my eyes upon them for evil and not for good. So all this, this care and, and, and attention that God gives to the good that, that he, I was just describing, he applies it in the same way to punish the wicked. Scripture assures us that if we rebel against God, there is nowhere that we can hide to escape from his wrath and his punishment. He will be absolutely relentless in pursuing us and punishing us for our sins. It says in the book of Job, Job says, Who hath resisted God and hath found peace? Obviously nobody. So let us remember these things today. These are important promises and warnings in Scripture. We will either... Be one or the other. We will either be the object of God's love and protection if we serve him, if we mortify our passions, if we follow our Lord with love and and humility and sacrifice. But if we avoid him and neglect him so that we can do what we want instead, we have great cause to fear. Let us examine our consciences today and find out which one it is and make sure that we are of those who serve God and are protected by Him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.